The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome. So Steve Zomer is out on vacation, so you get me announcing the bowling for the band. No gimmicks, just sign up. <laughs> this is next uh, Sunday. Um, it's, it's creeped up on us. Um, uh, get a, a team together uh, or sign up as an individual and we'll insert you on a team and you get to know some other folks. Um, and, um, and if you don't want to bowl, I, under I understand. Come off with the silent auction and instead. So, uh, Divine Service setting one, page 151, opening hymn, My Faith Looks Up to the 702. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you, our Lord. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. It's called an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill the same through the same through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen
Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 49. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, he who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to the one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of the rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brothers Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge. Even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end of guiltlessness in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with the two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means 
Christ. He brought him to Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Gospel lesson of John chapter 1. We hear John identify Jesus and his role. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And This is the one of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. Here ends our text. Dear Christian friends, the right tool for the right job. If you're going to get something done, you've got to have the right tools. How many tools have been sold under that theme? Honey, I'd be happy to put up that molding, but you know, I'm going to need a new miter saw. But if I buy the saw, I'll put up the molding. Oh, Home Depot loves you with that theory. Works in the kitchen, too. I'd be happy to make the chicken that you love, but you know, I need a... Now fill in the blank. Air fryer. Food processor. What's that pressure cooker one? The one that's in Instapot. Instapot. I don't know if you need all three to do the chicken, but why not? Throw it all in. I'd be happy to make it if I have the right tool. Of course, it goes the other way, too. You don't really want to put up the moldings? No problem. Well, honey, I could put up the moldings, but now go high dollar. You know, it can cost $600 for a miter saw. I found one online that cost $600 yesterday. It could go $600 to, put up a, to buy a miter saw. Is it really worth $600? You're getting out of that job, aren't you? <laughs> I would be happy to make that recipe, honey, but I checked. It calls for fresh caviar. I just checked the fridge. We don't have any. <laughs> I, by the way, I don't know if you put caviar in the fridge or not. You can tell me later you know, as we go out. So the theme is wonderful the right tool needed for the job. What if it's a job this big? Take away the sins of the world. 
What tool is going to work for that? If you want to get out of it, it's pretty easy, isn't it? What could possibly do that? And yet John says twice, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Is that the one you expected? Left to ourselves, I don't think so. But isn't it a marvel of God that he has this impossible job? Take away the sins of the world. And he also has the one, the Lamb, who will do the job. Let's go see how. We're going to have two images of takes the sins of the world because John says, behold the Lamb, twice. Let's start with this one. We had a wonderful Christmas. The grandchildren were there. There was milk glasses, one's two, one's four. What happens to full glasses of milk? You know, absolutely. But you know what? We're grandparents. We're chill. We're good. Yeah, so, so what do you do when the milk is like that and the whole glass is over? What are you going to reach for? No, no, no. Not the towel that's hanging on the handle of the oven or is it on the fridge? Where is it in your house? It's one of the two. That's what our kids would always go for. And then they would, after they take the towel, sop up the milk, they'd put the towel back on the <laughs> oven. And as I see, you're all smiling. Yes, your children did that too. And now that you're adults, you'd say, why did I do that? It's fine if you're going to put it in the wash, but don't do that. No, 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 no. I know this is going to sound like a bounty ad, but get the paper towel out because where are you going with this? You're throwing it away. That makes perfect sense. It was made to be thrown away. So do that. You also take care of the stain. If in the garage I'm changing oil, I always spill a little. It's going to happen. You don't quite get the catch pan under the right spot. It happens. You're pouring from the catch pan into the recycling bottle. It spills. What are you going to use? I have two boxes of old t-shirts. This is our daughter Nicole's junior year powder puff t-shirt. I know she wore it one night and she'll never wear it again. This has definitely got rag for oil cleanup all over it. It wasn't made for that, but that's really all it's going to be now. And when it's done, throw it away. These make sense, don't they? Paper towel, old t-shirt. How about this? My mother's doilies. My mother crocheted, I think that's the right verb, isn't it? Crocheted tons of these. This one is at least 30 years old. Now when mom got done with it, it was absolutely white and starched. I'm not quite sure why she starched it, but stiff as a board, and as you can tell, 30 years has changed it. Is this what you would use? Look at your smile. Starched, stiff. Is this what you reach for? For the milk or the oil? No. Yeah, see, you're shaking your heads already. No. That'll never work. It's, well, it's too stiff. It's too white. It's too full of holes. It's not meant for that. Let me just put this here as a reminder as we hear John say again, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Is that the one you expected would take away the stain of the sins of the world? No. Isn't he like, well, this? Too perfect. Too starched in his perfection to ever take in any stain. He is truly holy. How much stain can he carry? And he wasn't made to be thrown away. And yet, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How could he do that? How could the one who is so perfect, who has repelled sin all his life, take the sins of the world? Isn't that a strange change of direction? Tempted and tested in every way, he has pushed off every sin. And yet at the end of his life, he will take them all in. Well, maybe it's that perfection that allows us to understand at least a little of this. You know, it's an old, old saying that nature abhors a vacuum. That's probably true. Create a vacuum, things try to fill it. I wonder if sin abhors a vacuum even more. If sin abhors a vacuum of perfection even more. And who is the absolute perfect one? The vacuum of sin. Of course, it's the Lamb of God. Jesus has pushed off all sin. He is truly holy. And yet when he allows himself to be filled, he draws all sin to himself. Because he is absolutely without sin, all sin comes rushing in to fill that void. And he allows it. And isn't that the wonder? 
God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And the Lamb of God, in all his perfection, takes the sins onto himself. And the Father even wills put that son into the darkness of the tomb, but then reclaims him on Easter. It's the perfect match. So there's an impossible job that's done. Behold the Lamb who can take the stain of sin onto himself. That's one image of carrying the sins of the world. There's another because, again, John says one more time, Behold the Lamb, the <laughs> Lamb of God. And for that, I've got to ask you the narthex question today. The narthex question is, how would you travel in your ideal? Your ideal state of travel. I'm going to swing the pendulum from one extreme to another. I have a friend who is a traveling salesman. He's on the road pretty much every week. He packed for travel every Sunday and off he goes. I said, Mark, isn't that tiring? Isn't that hard to do? He said, Dan, you only need two things to travel. If I got my cell phone and my wallet, I'm good. That's all I really need. If I forgot it, I can buy it. Okay, is that your ideal of travel? Let's see, cell phone, wallet, I'm good, let's go. Or are you the other side? I love driving to see our kids because you know they're all a long ways away. Let's go to Denver to see Nicole. And uh, what do we get to take? Whatever you want. We're driving the CRV, little mid-sized Honda SUV. There's only two of us. Holly will say, I wonder if I should take my boots. What's the answer? Take the boots. I wonder if it's going to be cold. Should I take the winter? Take the coat. I want. Take it, honey. I wonder if Nicole still wants that T-shirt from junior year powder puff. Take it. I don't care. Whatever. But take it soon because it's next in line in the shop. But take it. To me, by the way, I'm over here. Take it all. Bring it all. It adds up to a load. Oh, an extra coat, an extra pair of boots, a T-shirt. What is that to our car? It's a great little pack mule. And that's the image I want you to play with. If God's going to take the sins of the world, it's got to be quite a load. What image works for that? Our little CRV wouldn't do it. Pack mule that it is, it's not going to carry that load. What would God give us as an image of that which could carry a load? Pack mule, pack horse, big draft horse, ox, an elephant. How about a pack sheep? A pack lamb. Isn't that a strange image? A lamb who can take the sins of the world. But what a load that is. Can we even imagine the load itself? The load of all of our sins. It would be too much for us. You know, one of our sins, one of our mistakes can wipe out a day. On Tuesday, I was looking for these set of pictures. It's a set of pictures, the reprints of the originals, of our Model T when we first got it. My dad and I, that's dad and I, working on it. I want to just use it in class. Oh, my friends from past years, you've seen them. This is the same pictures, Steve, that I've had for a, a long time in page. Well, they're in the junk drawer on the top corner of my desk. You have a junk drawer, don't you? The one where you know everything is in, right? 20 minutes. I couldn't find it. I went through the drawer. I emptied it out a little. Could not find it. Finally, I have to go to class. When I get to class, I explain to I'm still looking, and I'm sorry, I don't have the picture that I was going to use for show and tell. And I have to explain, if at some point in class, you're giving a wonderful answer, and I look a little distracted, like I'm not really here, I'm not. I'm still emptying the junk drawer one more time, saying, where are those pictures? By golly. And we made it through a three-hour class. I think at least it came up to 1130, and I went back, and I found them. Oh, by the way, the junk drawer was a little full. And so they fell out of the junk drawer into the drawer below the junk drawer. And then they got covered up by more junk in that junk drawer. But I found them. Here's the thing. I made one mistake. And it wasn't the biggest sin in the world. Wiped out my day. Wiped out the morning. For about four hours, I was fixated on, where is it? How old am I getting? How forgetful am I now? What if all our sins came? What if they were all pressed on? Could you function? I don't think so. Couldn't move. Couldn't speak. I'd be crushed under that load. That's just mine. Who could carry them all? The Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. 
And I think at this point, all we can do is stand in wonder <coughs> and mystery. How can he carry them? One sin undoes me. One mistake fills my mourning. Who can carry the sins of the world? What a load. Picture him carrying that load. <coughs> Monday, Thursday. No wonder the exertion of his prayers caused his sweat to become like blood. Think of the load he was settling under. Picture him, Good Friday, walking under that load of the cross, a load so heavy they needed to press it onto someone else to help. Picture him on the cross for six hours. Olympic weightlifters hold the bar above their head for but a few seconds. He carried the load of the sins of the world for six hours. He carried it to the darkness of having to cry out, my God, why have you forsaken me? Consider the load and when it's released. When the strong man in the Olympics has held the bar up long enough, he lets it down usually with a shout. Listen to this strong man as he says, it is finished. And the load is done. Only the Son of God could carry that load. We can't even imagine it. And I certainly don't want to ever settle under it, even just mine. Onto his bar, the bar of the cross, all the sins of the world were heaped. And he, the Son of God, with that power of God, and yet the one willing to be the Lamb of God, carried that law. If we were to look at that job and God were to ask, who can do this? What tool is needed? We'd shake our heads and say it'll never be done. But instead we have this wonderful text, don't we? Where John points and says to us twice, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, that one can do it. You need the right tool for the job. I don't know if there's another kitchen something coming. We don't have an air fryer yet, but it'll come, I suspect, at some point, And I'm all for it. The other things are doing great. I don't have to buy a new miter saw. Don't worry, honey. But if you do really want me to build that set of cabinets, we're going to need new router bits. So just brace yourself. If you want the job done, you've got to have the right tool. God says, do you want this job done? Someone to carry the sins of the world? And though it's too much for us to ever ask, we timidly say, yes, if it could be done. And John says it for us all. Then behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand to confess our faith, the Nicene Creed, page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
In our prayers, we pray for the family of Teresa Lober. Her funeral was on Thursday. We pray for the family of Janan Leemacher, who died on Tuesday. Her funeral was on Friday. We pray for the, those who are uh, ill or recovering, for Art Melker, Landon Zellick, Jen Wetzel, Mary Reichert, Rianne Wagner, Dave and Bernie Pedersen, who are in hospice care, Jim Strage, for Jean Bonnert, who is dying, for La Laverne Schauer, who is dying, and for Agnes Thurl in hospice care as well. Let us pray together in the Lord's name and for the mercy he has promised to all in need. For the church, the body of Christ, and the elect whom he has called into faith and fellowship through his Son. And for this congregation now gathered at his bidding around his word and table, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the missionaries in the field, for newly planted congregations, and for each of us in our baptismal calling to worship, witness, prayer, and service, let us pray to the Lord. For husbands and wives, for all women with child, for children and families, for the spirit to renew our appreciation for the sacred gift of life and our responsibility to protect life from conception to its natural end, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the agencies and ministries that support pregnant women and their children, for our service to the poor and those in need, for God's blessing upon all our works of mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nation and our president, for the governor of this state, for all judges and magistrates, and for those who serve us as firefighters, police, disaster workers, and medical personnel, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and those who care for them, for the dying and those who mourn, for those who struggle with mental illness, that God may heal them according to his will and grant them comfort and peace in their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For an end to aimless violence, for the virtues of compassion and kindness, for grace to forgive those who hurt us, for us to seek forgiveness from those whom we have hurt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to recognize Christ, the Lamb of God. For boldness to confess him before the world. And for a thankful heart to acknowledge all his goodness toward us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a steadfast heart in times of duress for strength amid temptation, and for the grace of humility so we may not fall victim to pride and arrogance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For faith as we approach the Lamb of God to eat his body and drink his blood in this sacrament. For grace to keep in holy hearts what we receive upon our lips, and for the Spirit to keep us in this faith until Christ comes in his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For generous hearts that we may humbly remember the giver of every good gift and joyfully return to the Lord our tithes and offerings, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Lord, receive the prayers of your people according to your promise and grant to us all things needful, but keep from us all things harmful that we may be kept safe and secure in the arms of our Savior until he comes to bring all things to their perfect fulfillment. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the olive alien sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you've given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.